Welcome to the Pitcher Nail Down. I'm Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11, taking a look at pitching options on tonight's slate. Uh, got about five for you that I'll be looking at. Um, mainly sticking with the kind of these top arms here that are priced up a bit. It's, it's just kind of one of those slates to be to be uh, paying up. I mean, there's one uh, cheaper option that we can consider tonight uh, going up against the Padres, and you might be a little bit hesitant after going that route last night uh, with Lance Lint and his horrendous performance, but uh, don't mind going back to the well there. Uh, we'll start with Corey Kluber here first, though. Facing a Red Sox team, uh, obviously that pounded Carlos Carrasco last night. They must have his number, um, and uh, you know somehow Doug Fister threw another gym against Cleveland. Um, look at, at Kluber. Red Sox, you know, they're not a team that, that have a ton of power. Um, you know, this offense really doesn't have a lot of upside. They also don't allow a ton of upside to opposing pitchers either. Um, just a 19.2% strikeout rate against righties this year. They're fourth in contact. Um, you know, Kluber, obviously, his off-speed stuff, uh, you know, Cutter is, is throwing about 50% of the time with the slider slash curveball, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, both are two pitches that Boston can handle pretty well. Um, uh, Red Sox offense, I mean, you know, has seen Kluber a couple of times. Uh, Kluber has about a 23% strikeout rate against them over that span. I, you know, this, the double-digit strikeout upside's there. Obviously, anytime McClure steps on the mound, um, you know, the good thing is that we're not getting him at a, a 13, 5, 14K price tag over on DraftKings. He's 12-7. I mean, obviously, that's still expensive. You still want that upside. You still are kind of looking for 30-plus out of Kluber. Um but, you know, I can also kind of see maybe a, a game where he does against Kansas City last time out, or you go back to when he faced Detroit and, and kind of, you know, he, yeah, he doctored up uh, some strikeouts, but, um, you know, it wasn't as much as, you know, the double digits in, in, in between those starts. So um, Kluber's one where, you yeah, obviously, you know, I like the upside. I, I don't really like the price tags off of that matchup. Um, I, I still don't mind him in cash games, obviously, because the floor is there. Um, but I, I will be venturing off in GPPs elsewhere because, you know, I, I do like Luis Severino. I do like Zach Godley here, um, and they come in cheaper. Um, the difference between Severino and Kluber on DraftKings isn't all that much, but, um, but Severino actually has a lot more cases to be made in this matchup against Tigers than, than Kluber does against Boston. So, um Kluber, expensive option tonight, but playable in all formats. Um, obviously, he leads, you know, in K percentage swing strike rate on this slate, as you can expect. Um, he's a big favorite there at home, minus 188, Boston under a four-run total. So, don't mind Kluber in all formats, but um, I'll definitely be spreading around some of my exposure to these other pitchers. Luis Severino, uh, he's a, a guy that I really like tonight. Obviously, he, he was phenomenal against Detroit last time out, struck out eight over 5.1 innings. Um, blew up against Boston, but obviously bounced back against the Mets, striking out nine over six. On DraftKings, obviously, the, the difference really isn't that big. On FanDuel, it's, it's definitely a difference. It can mean an extra hitter or two. Um, Severino, I mean, pretty strong on the road this year, averaging over 20 DK points, um, averaging over 40 FanDuel points away from home. Tigers offense, they struggle against righties, 23%, uh, 22% strikeout rate, 316 Woba, 154 ISO. To kind of put that in comparison, uh, Tigers Woba, they're on par with the Angels and Braves. Uh, ISO is on par with the White Sox and Phillies, uh, and obviously that strikeout rate is certainly below average. They're a middle-of-the-road contact team. They have a lot of right-handed bats. Even their lefties really aren't anything that scares me away from using Severino. It's Victor Martinez. Um, I don't know. They might have a lefty outfielder that they toss in there. I can't even name them right now. But um, this is a team that's heavily right-handed, which Severino is tough on. Um, he's playable in all formats for me. Obviously, you know, we look years past, and we didn't really target guys against the Tigers. But losing J.D. Martinez, Miguel Cabrera really hasn't shown any power upside this year. Um, it, it just makes for actually a really good matchup for, for when these right-handed bats uh, right-handed pitchers come into town. So Alex Severino, once again, he is playable in all formats as well. Seth Godley, uh, he's one of my favorite pitchers to use this year. Um, he's, you know, top 10 in a lot of stats, uh, especially in the strikeout department. Uh, top 10 in put-away percentage. Uh, that's something I, I kind of look at lately. Uh, rolls a ton of ground balls, 55% ground ball rate. So when base runners do get on, uh, obviously he, he has a chance to get out of it with some double play balls. 14.2% um, swinging strike rate, 26% strikeout rate this year. Look at this Mets offense, you know, outside of really Cespedes and Conforto, 
you know, not much here. Bruce Walker, they both left. Um, they've seen the struggles already over the last 30 days. Um, 29th in Wobo with a 25.4% strikeout rate. This team has been really bad. Um, you know, the line they put out last night was god awful with Conforto scratch. So that could be the case again where this is just an extremely watered down lineup. The strikeout rate's high. Godley comes in. Um, I, I don't think you can, you know, really get away from him on, on DraftKings all that much just because, you know, He's about a 3K difference between Kluber and Severino, you know, and even cheaper than Stroman. I feel like he's kind of underpriced there. Uh, as for FanDuel, I mean, you're still getting a pretty good discount, 8,800 uh, compared to Severino, who's 99, Kluber, who's 11K. Um, you know, if, if you want to get those extra few bats in, I, I definitely don't mind using Godley over those two. I, I don't think it's that crazy. So um, I, I like Godley a lot tonight. Great matchup. Um, should get some run support there with um, if it was on the other side. But um, Dimebacks often should come away with a win there. So I, I really like Godley in this spot. Marcus Stroman, he's a guy who, who – I was interested to see last time out. He came in a little bit under owned against the Rays, and I think that's going to be the case again just with the three names above. Um, Strowman's price is definitely going to scare people away. He, he's not a huge strikeout arm. Um, he rolls a really heavy ground ball uh, over 60% this year. You look at, you know, keeps the ball in the park. Obviously, this Rays team is really boomer bust, and they've been awful of late. I mean, 27% strikeout rate over the last 30 days. Did last in Woba and ISO. Um, bottom 10 in hard contact. It's just, this is the team that completely fell off. Um, and, you know, there will be a team that I target for the rest of the year. So, in Tropicana, a good spot for Stroman here. I like him in GPPs. I won't be going that way in cash games. He's a little bit expensive for my taste, but I think he's a good pivot, especially if you think Kluber is just going to have a pedestrian outing or Severino maybe gives up a home run or two, um, which I, I don't think is really likely for Severino, but I think Kluber could have an, uh, a pedestrian outing for his price tag where Stroman, you might be getting a little bit more of a bargain, uh, even though it's not a huge difference between him on, on DraftKings. Um, it's about 1200 so uh, FanDuel, a little bit different story, but uh, Stroman's like a good low-owned leverage play off of those three names, um, but I definitely like God, these Severino Kluber more than I do Stroman here tonight, uh, but the matchup is obviously solid. Luke Weaver, uh, he's, he's the guy that we can take a look at. I think he's going to be a popular SP2 on tonight's slate at his price tag. 6,900 on DraftKings. Um, that's kind of what you're looking at, especially given the fact that, you know, Kluber, Severino, Godley are a little bit more on the expensive side. Um, a Godley, you know, Weaver uh, pairing is definitely interesting because there's a lot of strikeout upside there and a lot of upside, um, and you can still get some bats in. So I, I do like that combination quite a bit. Um, but Weaver this is obviously a guy who's talented. Um, you know, pitched out of the bullpen on the 17th, but he is stretched out to, to be a starter. I can see him going about five or six innings tonight. I don't see him really going any more than that, um, you know, unless he's really pitching well. But Milwaukee uh, struck out eight over 6.1 innings, uh, picked up the win. He's got good strikeout stuff. I mean, 25% strikeout rate in AAA this year, 27% strikeout rate back in 2016 at the major league level. It was over 36 uh, innings. Throws four pitches, um, you know, decent fastball. Uh, I do think the ownership's going to come in on, on two pitchers' sites. Uh, San Diego's team, obviously, they put up a ton of runs last night. I don't really see that happening again here. Their bottom three in Woba and K percentage against righties this year over the last 30 days, not much has really changed. Um, I think you're going to get five to six strong innings out of Weaver here, possibly pick up a win, uh, and I can definitely see him kind of being a strikeout per inning guy tonight. So uh, I, I do like him. I expect him to be, once again, really popular. If you want to fade, I'm certainly okay with that in GPPs as well um, and kind of paying up to two. So that's going to wrap it up. You can go to NordayFantasyCafe.com, check out the right tools and content.